As one of the most junior pilots at the airline, I was given a reserve schedule, and that's one of the most common things you'll experience as a brand new airline pilot. There's a few pros and cons that you need to know about reserve. I just transferred here to our Chicago base from New York to make my commute from North Dakota a little bit easier. So that's what we'll cover in this video is reserve and what you need to know as you get started. Keep in mind, I'm a pilot at Envoy and I can't speak to the way that reserve works at every airline across the country because each airline has very unique policies and procedures for how reserve scheduling works for their pilots. And it's really important that you get to know those policies even before you start applying for your first few airline jobs because it will impact the way that the first few years of your career will go. But what I'll try to do in this video is break down the most basic components of reserve that you can expect to find across the board regardless of which airline you'll be working at. Generally speaking, there are two groups of pilots at airlines. The first is reserve pilots who are on call for use by the airline. They don't have a full set of flights scheduled for the month, but instead are working on an on-call basis. The second group is line holders. Line holders have a schedule of flights throughout the month, so generally speaking, they have an idea of what they're going to be doing each and every day. Whether or not you can hold a line is determined by your seniority in base for your aircraft type. Crew scheduling uses reserve pilots to fill last minute gaps in crew staffing requirements to ensure that flights are running on time as best as possible. You can think of us on reserve as crew scheduling's last line of defense against situations in which there's a flight that's ready to depart, but not two pilots that are assigned to that flight. We can get called for almost anything on reserve, like when other pilots get sick, when they reach their legal flight time limits for the day, during weather or mechanical delays, or even for a repositioning flight in which we have to transport an aircraft from place to place without passengers on board. There are two kinds of reserve at Envoy. The first is called wrap or reserve availability period. If you're sitting on wrap and crew scheduling gives you a call with a flight assignment, they have to give you at least two hours to get to the airport. In the meantime, you're free to do anything you want around town or where you're staying. And if you're a pilot that lives in base full time, you can stay at home, which isn't such a bad deal. Other airlines have something called long call reserve, which is just like our wrap period, but a much longer call out of 12 hours or more. The second type of reserve that we have at Envoy is something called airport standby, where you're assigned to physically sit at the airport for up to eight hours during the day, and crew scheduling will use standby pilots if they need a crew member within just an hour or two of a departure. Let's say that you're sitting airport standby and scheduling gives you a call with a departure that's about an hour from now. Well, you could be expected to be at the airplane in just about 15 minutes, which means that you already have to be in uniform and have your bag ready to go with you. Most pilots who are sitting airport standby spend that time in the crew lounge or walking around the airport trying to find something to do on the long day of sitting here.
I just got a call from crew scheduling and I was assigned to turn to Nashville, Tennessee about an hour from now. This is about the most exciting part of reserve, being called to fly somewhere to last minute's notice after a few days of sitting and not flying at all. I haven't been to Nashville, Tennessee, so it should be a pretty fun trip. Here's what my first month of reserve looked like when I was based in New York. As you can see, I got 11 off days, which is the minimum amount that they have to give us as reserve pilots at Envoy, and 20 days of scheduled reserve. Of those 20 days, about 10 of which I actually flew, meaning I totaled about 30 hours of flight time for the entire month. The other nine days were either spent on airport standby or wrap, not getting called to fly at all. Only twice was I given an actual overnight trip. And as you can see for the rest of the schedule, there really wasn't a lot of consistency other than the days off. As pilots on reserve at Envoy, we're guaranteed at least 75 hours of pay per month. And unless you were to pick up overtime flying on off days, it's extremely unlikely that you're gonna get paid more than that 75 hours while on reserve. This is an extremely common structure across airlines to get about 75 hours of pay at a minimum guaranteed on reserve. Traditionally, reserve assignments are given to the most junior captains and first officers at any given base, and that's for one big reason. You get less off time when you're on a reserve schedule than on a normal line schedule for the month. And if you're someone like me who commutes from elsewhere in the country, you get even less time spent at home because I often have to commute in the day before or the day after my scheduled reserve assignment. But for people who live in base, reserve can be a really good thing, and you'll often find even senior pilots bidding for reserve in base because they can spend time at home on a two-hour call-out period. When you're working a reserve schedule as a pilot, you constantly have a bag packed in case you're called to fly at the last minute. It's not always the easiest way to live, especially when you don't live in base as a pilot. But in the end, regardless of which company you're planning on flying for, reserve is something that almost everybody experiences at some point.